Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And while my science is pretty strong, got the PhD up here on the thing, I can tell you that my math sucks. For some reason, I have a roadblock to math. So, and this is going to be a little bit of a mathematical video. So bear with me as I stumble through this. But before we go ahead, folks, sometimes we drop out of the optimal range of ketosis, which is about 0.5 to 2. And the best way to get in there is to eat fat, but sometimes we need that little burst. And Cheryl and I have done a lot of experimentation. Ketone IQ is the best product we found to rapidly restore optimal ketosis. Whether you're going to exercise, whether you're working, whether you need to be awake, uh, popping one of these babies in tastes a little bit crappy, but gets you into the optimal range very quickly and keeps you there for three to four hours. Look at the show notes and you will see a promo code that will get you 20% off. What we're going to talk about is this. I had a patient come in the other day and they had a heart attack, went to see their cardiologist. And their cardiologist was, oh man, you can't have salt. You mustn't have salt. Salt's so bad for you. Salt's causing your high blood pressure. Blah, 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 bashing the crap out of salt and then telling them to be on a whole grain vegetarian diet, low fat, lots of sugar. So I sat back and of course, in our space, we promote salt very heavily. We promote salt very heavily. So I just wanted to break this down and kind of review some of the reality about salt versus sugar. So if you look at how much salt I eat in a day, it's around five grams. This is something from Redmond Real Salt. Um, I have no affiliation with them, although we do have a promo code with them. If you use Carb Addiction Doc, uh, you'll get a, I think it's either 10 or 15% off the price of your salt from them. And this is the salt we use. I have no affiliation with them. They're not paying for me to say this at all. But this is how much salt I use. Okay, that's the, uh, um, that's the five grams of Redmond salt uh, about per day that we use globally. So let's look at salt. Okay, that five grams of salt that the cardiologist tells my patient, oh, it's so bad for you. It's so terrible for you. Well, is it? Is it? One of the things that salt does, salt sucks up water uh, into the blood vascular space. There's salt in the, in the water at a 0.9% concentration. And salt regulates blood volume and blood pressure. In fact, the entire human blood pressure system, from the kidneys to the lungs to the heart, all of that is regulated by salt and hormones that control salt, the renin angiotensin system. So salt is vital, 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 vital vital to the management of normotensive blood pressure and blood volume. And by the way, a normal blood pressure for most adult humans is about 110 over 60 or 110 over 70. It isn't 120, 120 over 80. Once we get to 120 over 80, that's starting to already become hypertensive. But that's for another day. Okay, so let's look at um, salt. That's the five grams. Now, what other molecule, what other molecule has a lot of water sucking up hygroscopic properties? That molecule is glucose, sugar, glucose, fructose, galactose. Every molecule of glucose has six molecules of water attached to it. Okay, six molecules of water. So here's the bizarre thing. So I, I was in the doctor's office the other day getting my coffee and I stumbled across this thing right after that patient had come in. This is Mugs root beer. It's a small can, okay? It's only 12 fluid ounces, 355 ml. Small can, easily consumed by an adult. So let's look at the back of this. There are 43 grams, 43 grams of total carbohydrates in this, uh, um, in this bottle. And now they, it's four calories per gram. So already, if they say there's only 160 calories, you know that mathematically that's a lie. They've lied to you, okay, which they do, but, and they're not supposed to. But 43 grams, okay, and then they say that that is 16% of your RDA, of your recommended dietary allowance. We'll come back to that in a second. So here's the math. 40 grams, let's just call it 40 grams. That, sir and madam, is eight times, in one can of this, eight times, eight times the amount of salt here. So that cardiologist, that naive, misguided cardiologist is beating the crap out of you for five grams of salt 
and completely ignoring the eight time greater amount of sugar that's in here. The other key thing that you've got to understand, salt goes nowhere. Salt goes nowhere. Salt remains in the human body, so it's in your bloodstream. And there's a certain fraction of salt, so let's break down the numbers. There's a certain fraction of salt in the human bloodstream. And in the blood at 0.9% in the average 70 kilogram man, for those of you that are doing, or person, human, could be a female, that's about 5 liters of fluid, which equals about 45 grams, about 45 grams of salt in my entire body. Okay? 45 grams. That is eight, nine times this in my entire body. So if I eat this per day, that's one ninth of the amount of salt just in my bloodstream. Now, if you look at the entire human being, so the first place is salt at 0.9% is in the bloodstream, very tightly regulated because it regulates blood pressure and blood volume. The second thing is the total human body. So there's salt in the cells as well. But if you look at the average 70 kilogram man, there's around 250 to 300 uh, grams of salt in the entire human body. Okay, that's how much salt there is. Okay, sorry folks. So if you see a little splice in this video, I, I normally do all my videos as a single take, but there's a little splice here because my math, as I said earlier on, is off. But I'm quite accurate there, is that um, in the human body, 50 to uh, 50 kilogram to a 70 kilogram 70 kilo uh, kilogram person, there's around 250 to 300 grams of salt with about 45 grams of salt in the bloodstream. Okay, so remember that number. Now, the salt doesn't go anywhere. So salt does not get transformed. It does go from the bloodstream into the cells back and forth. And it, it's used to manage intracellular and intravascular volume and very, very tightly controlled hormonally through sodium, potassium and sodium glucose channels into the cells. The other thing that you do with salt is it doesn't get transformed, but it does get peed out. You can pee it out, you can sweat it out, and the largest source of salt exchange is in the colon where you poop it out or, or suck it up from the water in your colon. So uh, the salt in the human body is very tightly regulated, and salt doesn't get transformed. Why am I keep on saying the word transformed? Because here's the thing. When you eat sugar, that sugar sucks up, that glucose sucks up a huge amount of water, Water goes into your blood vascular space, goes into the cells with the sugar. As sugar goes, the water goes with it. But then the sugar gets used up. Sugar gets used, burnt down to energy. So it becomes ATP. You destroy the glucose molecule or the glucose molecule gets stored as fat. The liver turns the sugar to fat. Fat cells turn sugar to fat. Now you're left with this free water in the cell, in the blood vascular space, a massive amount of extra water, even though the sugar's gone. So think about that. Salt does not go away. It gets moved around and it gets peed out, but it doesn't get transformed. The sugar gets transformed and you're left with all this water. And when you're eating a high amount of sugar, the water is a huge problem. It damages cells, it damages the interstitial space, it causes hypertension, it damages the heart and the blood vessels. That is the effect of glucose and water. So Remember that the glucose in the water is dangerous. The salt is required. And yet the cardiologists out there and all the doctors are beating up salt, beating up salt, beating up salt and completely ignoring, in fact, telling you to use sugar. So let's see how ridiculously bad the sugar numbers are. Okay, so let's finish up with salt first and foremost. So if I drink a Gatorade Zero, there's a Gatorade Zero, okay? And we're going to use the numbers that are commercially used by everybody. Gatorade Zero or even in my, not my, uh, somebody else's mug's root beer. There are 65 milligrams of salt, which is 3% of, reg, uh, of RDA, required daily amount. Okay. Um, in the Gatorade, it's about the same. It's 270 milligrams for 12%. Now, with my little pencil and my calculator, I've done the math. Okay. So 270 milligrams is 12%, which accounts to about 2,250 milligrams or about uh, two grams of salt, okay? So we're consuming uh, the regulated, uh, the, the RDA per day is about 
2.25, two and a quarter grams of salt is what they recommend. Now, when I'm consuming, this is about five grams, I'm about double that. I'm about double the RDA on salt, okay? And Cheryl's gonna do a video on this down the road, but we have really clueless about where the RDA comes from. I'm probably consuming a little bit more than I need to. My body's good at using excess salt and I never wanna be in salt deficiency. So I'll allow my body to take care of the excess, which it does very well when it comes to salt, okay? So RDA is about, about that two and a half grams. So about half of this little bottle or up to a full bottle. So about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt uh, is about what you need per day. Okay, now let's look at the sugar. So when you look at this 43 grams, 43 grams of glucose in here, they're telling us that that's an, a 16% RDA. Okay, so if you do the math, they're saying that you need around 270 grams, 270 grams of sugar a day, which is about 1,075 calories a day for the average 70 kilo person. Think about that. That's a thousand calories just of sugar. Just of sugar. I'm on a carnivore diet. I eat close to zero. Haven't died yet. So if you look at 270 grams of sugar. Now, think about this. When you eat that RDA, you're eating 270 grams of sugar, it's going into your bloodstream, it's sucking up water, the water's going into your cells, it's going to your brain, your entire body is getting waterlogged on that excess sugar. And yet that is what the cardiologist is absolutely fine with. No worries there. But this is too much. This two and a half to five grams of salt is too much. Okay? Folks, Look at that incredible transformation in math. Because when you eat that 270 gram carbohydrate load, that's going into your bloodstream. Remember, the bloodstream only has four grams. Okay, four grams of glucose. Think about this. Think about this. Okay, my body right now, my body right now has four grams of sugar in my bloodstream. Four grams of sugar in my entire bloodstream. And that keeps my blood sugar in the 70 to 80 range. That's what I am right now. And in fact, the interesting fact is this, that if you're diabetic, how much sugar is there in the entire bloodstream between normal and diabetes? About four and a half to five grams. So a half to one gram difference in total blood sugar is the difference between being normal glycemic and being hyperglycemic and type 2 diabetes. That's how carefully controlled the human body is. Now, the RDA, the recommended dietary allowance, is 270 grams a day. That's the recommendation. I have four grams in my whole, in my whole bloodstream. My whole bloodstream is four grams. Okay? 45 grams of salt in my bloodstream. 45 grams of salt in my bloodstream. Okay? 11 times higher salt than sugar in my bloodstream. And now you tell me I must eat 270 grams of sugar. 270 grams of sugar per day. What the hell is that doing to my bloodstream? I only need four grams. And that can come from my liver. So if anybody tells you that you need to eat sugar, that you must eat sugar, yeah, think about that math. Share that with them. They're telling us 270 grams of sugar is in, that's what you want to eat. And most fat people are eating in excess of that. Most diabetics are eating in excess of that. I only need four grams in my bloodstream. And if I'm in ketosis, if I'm burning fat as a fuel source, I'm not burning through that four grams very fast. Maybe a gram an hour. Wow. And you're putting 270 grams in and you're telling me that this salt is not good enough. It's too much. Folks, let's get some perspective here. Let's get some darn perspective here. Anytime your cardiologist tells you that salt is bad, you need to be on a low sodium diet, or your kidney specialist, ask them about sugar. How much sugar should I eat in a day? And then use this video to explain the math to them. How ludicrously upside down, and I will use the word malpractice malpractice 
when it comes to those recommendations. Because to tell me I need to eat, to be healthy, 270 grams of sugar and only 2 grams of salt a day to be healthy. But I only have 4 grams of carbohydrate, of, of sugar in my bloodstream and I've got 45 grams of salt in my bloodstream. And I bet you no cardiologist, no cardiologist, no cardiologist knows this information. You do. So please, please, please understand how it's the sugar that is destroying your bloodstream, destroying your blood vascular system. And we haven't even talked about the inflammation of sugar. Salt is not doing that. The human body is designed to regulate salt. It is not designed to regulate excess sugar. It's the sugar that destroys us. It's the sugar that gives you hypertension. It's the sugar that gives you the atrial fibrillation. It's the sugar that clogs up your blood vessels or that triggers the, cl the clotting cascade that clogs up your blood vessels. And they blame salt. They blame salt and fat. That's malpractice. Yes, malpractice. I'll defend that on any stage. Because if you use any analogy to this equation, everybody would be very angry at that person for misrepresenting the truth. And we have to, we have to, if we're going to turn this around and survive as a species, we have to educate these people. We have to come at them repetitively because they have to understand how erroneous their mathematics are or is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. But I hope that makes you have that aha moment. I hope that makes you have that conscious giving conversation with your cardiologist, with your family doctor, anybody that ever recommends a low salt diet and ignores sugar. If you want help, if you want help understanding your numbers, if you want to help understanding how to change your lifestyle from a carbohydrate addiction perspective, give us a shout. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. We've got a great team behind us. Cheryl, our dietitian, Carb Addiction RD. We've got uh, Aaron Smith that's just joined us, our psychiatric nurse practitioner, helps with the psychology of what we're doing. Hit us up, WhatsApp, text us anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. Hit us up on WhatsApp, text us or call us. 561-517-0642 and set up a consult. We'll look at your blood work. We'll help you to understand where you are and help you to make biologic human transformations to your eating plan by being healthy, not by doing better, but by preventing harm. The best health comes from doing no harm. And anytime a cardiologist recommends sodium restriction and doesn't talk about glucose restriction, they are doing harm. They are not preventing harm.